to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. The chair appoints Patty Burke and Tom Everett to serve as counters this evening if in fact there is a need for a counted vote. Uh, please either silence your cell phone or put it on vibrate mode. If you want to speak to the article, please go to the center microphone uh, right up in front. And with that said, um, Article 1, Mr. Gallant moves that the town... Could you just indicate that it's being broadcast? Oh, I'm sorry. It's being videotaped? And uh, it is being broadcast and it is being videotaped. Um, Article 1, Mr. Gallant moves that the town vote to amend the vote taken on Article 8 of the June 4th, 2019 annual town meeting warrant operating budget by supplementing the amount appropriated for the Quabbin Regional School District budget with the additional amount of $44,146. And further to meet this appropriation by approving the budget line item transfers set forth in the handout provided to voters. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Williams. Um, it is recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the, the Finance Committee. Um, at this point, the, the Chair will recognize uh, the, the Town Administrator, Mr. McLean. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for your patience. My name is Ryan McLean. I'm the Town Administrator here in Hubbardston. Just wanted to outline uh, the documents you have and put this into context for you. It's a very important uh, discussion and decision point for the town um, that, that needs to be sort of explained. So the document you have in front of you, the front sheet is the summary, and then you have the line items. And I will uh, briefly explain uh, what's entailed in this particular vote. So first, why do we need to vote this budget again? So we did vote our budget at the annual town meeting in June. Um, the school assessment, or the number that town meeting approved for the Quabbin Regional School District was uh, less than what was certified by the school committee. So in a regional school district, 66% of the towns have to approve a budget in order for it to be approved in the region. So for our district, that's four of the five towns need to approve the budget. So three of the towns in the Quabbin Regional School District voted the budget, uh, voted their particular assessments or numbers less than their assessments. So that was us, New Braintree, and Hardwick. So each one of those towns um, will need to do what we're doing, which is meet again. So the budget goes back to the school committee for their consideration. They can go up, stay the same, or go down, and it comes back to the town for consideration again at a town meeting, which is what we're doing here. You have 45 days to do that, which is why we're meeting in August and having a difficult time getting a quorum. So why are there so many changes then? So you, you might be asking, if you look at uh, the budget as it's presented in the budget lines, there are many colors. It is the colored lines that, that are being recommended to you for change. So why is there so many? In a bigger town, you might see the ability to increase in order to meet a larger assessment with just one line item. So you might vote just for the school line item. Given that our budget is so small and so lean and so constrained, in order to meet higher numbers for anything, we need to make adjustments around the board. And I'm gonna explain what those adjustments are and try and make them as clear as possible. So in your budget, yellow means that the number went up. And I'll explain why a number might have gone up if we're facing a deficit. And orange means the number went down from our annual town meeting. So some of the reasons why things might change. At annual town meeting, we're dealing with numbers that are in some cases projected. Okay, right now we're already into fiscal year 2020. So some numbers we know now to be real, and those could be more than we thought or less than we thought. Normally we project conservatively, so a lot of the numbers that we have that are actual, we're able to realize some savings to try and make up some of the deficit between our number and the certified school assessment number and other budget items that needed to be changed. Another reason for all the changes, uh, we did a very large staff reorganization to try and make our budget more efficient. One of the things that was done is uh, we had a retirement with our town clerk we were lucky enough to have an, an in-house candidate who was the strongest candidate, Lori Reed, for our town clerk position. 
So took advantage of that uh, and reorganized my staff and combined the executive assistant position with the finance assistant in order to uh, save money and make things a little bit more efficient. Right? Because of that though, what Lori or other executive assistants brought to the table, we needed to increase some of the hours around the office to overcome some of the things that she did to help other departments. Also, our assessing assistant. So we've had a little bit of a, a revolving door with the assessing assistant position. It's difficult to find someone who's qualified to do that and willing to do it at the wages that, that we're able to pay. So we regionalized recently with Rutland in order to provide assessing assistant services uh, in both communities. Both communities are run by RRG, which is our regional assessor. So we, we took on this employee because it's a little bit cheaper for us to pay for benefits, but Rutland is supplementing that cost to us by giving us revenue for this shared agreement. So Rutland gets 20 hours, we get 12, and we're able to save a little bit of money. This was about a $13,000 expense, now it's an $11,500 expense for us uh, because of that regionalization. And lastly, there's a lot of changes because we need to meet the needs of the school. So the certified assessment asked for more money from the town in order to meet the needs of the school. We need to get to that number or do the best we can. So some changes are involved there. So what are the changes? If you, if you bear with me, I'm gonna go through briefly and tell you what the changes are recommended. So in line two, adding $4,000 to the budget for HR consulting, as part of that uh, consolidation, my office needs more support. Uh, we lost some hours due to the executive assistant change. There's a reduction in the select board account, that's uh, expenses account, that's line three. Normally, the select board expenses account is used to mail warrants to each home, to provide communication to residents, to do professional development for staff, and to keep compliant with legal. So every dollar we take out of that makes it more and more likely that we're not gonna be able to mail warrants to folks anymore or do other things uh, that we need to do in order to make sure that we get enough people here at town meeting. Line 11, the town clerk certification, it takes three years to qualify for this, so that's a line item we can reduce at this point. Line 17 is town accounting services. We regionalized our accounting services, but right now we have an overlap. So our old accountant is helping close out 19. Our new accountant is coming in to provide better services, more efficient services, but there is a cost overlap there, so we've increased that to cover what will be next year's expense. We will not need to increase this line item next year. The big change in line 20, the assessing assistant. So that looks like a real big change, right? 30,000 for a new employee, but again, we're not paying most of that. Rutland's paying 65% of that cost, so to us it's only 11,500. Line 28, the finance assistant, we eliminated that position and combined it with the executive assistant. Line 34, town custodian, we're increasing a couple hours. Um, this custodian does the entire town's worth of duties in 12 hours a week. Line 37, that's actual cost for the town website, so that was an easy reduction. Jumping quite a ways to line 78. Uh, the economic development coordinator we share with all Quabbin towns, that's an actual assessment. We thought it would be 7,000, it's actually 4,100 for this year. Line 79, I'm sorry, 80, the master plan expenses. We, were, we haven't used that in a couple years and we've been able to secure approximately thirty to $50,000 in grant money to help supplement the master plan expenses. Line 81 is the planning board assistant. Uh, adding hours of service there in order to supplement the growing needs of the planning board. Same thing for the um, line 82, the Board of Health and ComCom assistant and the uh, building assistant, making sure that we're at uh, max capacity for, for our uh, clerks in those positions. The next line, it's important to understand line 86. This is the Quabbin Regional School Assessment line. So you'll see under department requests that the most recent certified assessment from the Quabbin Regional School District was $4,751,988. At town meeting, we approved $4,693,549. The uh, Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen is recommending to the town that we fund this line item at $4,737,695 
which is $14,293 less than the school committee has certified for their assessment, which would mean this would be a rejection of that budget. Line 91. Brian, can I just say one thing? And just to be clear, I don't know if we said it before. So the school committee did come back with a new number. So again, it's not the old number that we're working off of. The school committee came back, which we'll go over a little bit after, with a new number um, in between our uh, annual town meeting and this special town meeting. So we've been working to try to get towards that, and that was the result of where we've gotten to. Okay. Line 91 is the DPW assistant. That's an additional hour to support the DPW, mostly in the financial realm. Lines 93 and 94, this is road maintenance money and general highway money. So this money uh, was requested in order to repair culverts in preparation for Chapter 90 expenses next year, in addition to the fact that we ran out of road maintenance money in April this year. So that additional money was going to help with potholes from May to, through June. Um, we are recommending that that money be cut. Uh, we'll try and find a way to uh, continue to maintain the roads at the current level. Um, and we'll have to take more Chapter 90 money in order to do the culvert work, which means uh, less road paving next year for that type of reduction. Line 106 is Council and Aging Director. Uh, this used to be at a 16-hour week position. We reduced it to 14 at town meeting to allow a workable wage that was at a greater percentage with uh, the Council and Aging Director's peers, plus uh, the fact that the uh, Council and Aging Director works way more than 19 hours. We're just trying to make that a competitive position and, and where it should be. Lines 113 and 114, uh, we have an interim library director, so that's actual salary. We're reinvesting, or the, the trustees have asked that we reinvest the difference between the old library director and the new in the library assistant wages to try and keep the library open longer and provide more services to residents. Almost done, I promise. Okay, and then on the, the back page, uh, we did a very careful analysis, we're trying to find money wherever we can, a careful analysis of the uh, health insurance budget. So this is not a budget that you can put exactly where it needs to be. So this, this budget may increase by anywhere from 0% to 10% on January 1st. Plus, if any of our employees decide to take insurance or we hire a new person that decides to take insurance, we need just a little bit of flexibility in here. So you keep cushions in your health insurance budget in order to not have to go for more money. So we feel comfortable in reducing the contingency in that line item in order to, to try and solve some of this deficit problem, but we do know that that is taking a risk. So this is about one extra employee's worth of, of health insurance money, which is, uh, which is danger close. That could change tomorrow. But it's worth taking the risk in order to not lose services elsewhere and to also invest in the schools. And finally, the insurance number, which is 138. Uh, that is actual cost insurance we pay for liability in the town and then also um, physicals and other things for employees who work for us. So how will this be voted? So we've already approved most of the items. The ones that aren't colored have already been approved. So we need to vote on the amended lines or any, uh, any combination of those lines in order to approve the current budget. So we're gonna go through line by line. Obviously the school budget is the most um, impactful in terms of the rest of the budget, so that one's going to be voted first, uh, because if, if that is different, then it changes the entirety of the way we've put this budget together. So how does this impact the bottom line? So it's important that all, uh, you heard me say at annual town meeting that budgets need to be put in context. So Hubbardson is currently operating in a deficit. What that means is we're borrowing money against the future. or using one-time revenues this year, $100,000 in order to supplement the operating budget. Last year we used 133. We have an aggressive plan to reduce this reliance, but there's no saying that the economy is going to stay the same or that state aid is going to stay the same. So what happens if we don't get the revenue that we projected? What happens is we have a $100,000 hole in the budget and we'd have to cut another 100,000 out of this budget and you've kind of seen how painful it is to cut 44,000 out, which is what we've been able to do. The revenue projections in this budget are very high well above the best practice in order to provide the level of services that residents want, knowing the restrictions of the uh, revenue that we have. 
So what that means for you is if we're projecting revenue high and it doesn't make it, that means we're also either going to have to make cuts or have less free cash. Why free cash matters in a town like Hubberson is it is the entirety of our capital expense program. So all these items that we need to buy in order to keep the town running the way it is, the less free cash you have, the less ability you have to do that, the less ability you have to save for what will inevitably be an economic downturn in the future. You want to be able to draw into your reserves and pay for your capital using excess monies. But lastly, this budget is very lean. It doesn't have any contingencies in it. So in a perfect world, and we hope that the world stays perfect, we'd be able to meet all the expenses that we have this year and have no issues. This year was a good example of that. We hit most of the things that we need. If anything changes, if the economy goes down or there's any other changes, then this budget is too lean to absorb that type of change. So we'd either need to dip into reserves or come back to a town meeting for more money at its current construction. Lastly, even at current staff levels, our largest complaint is about closed doors. So um, our really, really, really hardworking staff works as best they can. Most of them work 16 hours a week, which is about three hours a day to, to handle resident concerns. We know that that's what this budget can afford and we're, we're happy to do it, but that means that for every hour that's not funded, residents complain to us that they can't get the stuff done that they need to do in order to grow the town or to, to run uh, what it is they're doing with their business or their residency. This year we ran out of road money in April, which is an important consideration because roads is our second biggest complaint to closed doors. At our current pace of spending, we face a $200,000 deficit with $100,000 of free cash used in the budget, which means we have to find a way to carve $300,000 out of this budget or increase our revenues. It's just not sustainable on the municipal side. This is a survive budget, but it is not a forward leaning budget. I'm not, I'm not a scare guy, I'm just giving you the facts. We have a plan in place to try and grow the budget, but we have to control costs. There's nothing left really to regionalize, there's nothing left to share, there's really nothing left to cut. Um, there's nothing to make more efficient. And we'll try and we'll try and we'll try, I promise my staff will give you everything they have. There's just not a lot of wiggle room in a budget that's this lean. If anything changed, we would have an inability to fund future school assessments at any level. We'd have to reduce public safety because it's the only full-time employees that we have, and we would have to eliminate full-time personnel for town hall, and that's five people. So just putting the budget into context, th this is not a commentary on, on any particular budget. Every department is asked to do their part in order to fund this because there is no appetite in Hubberston to increase revenues. The only way to do that would be through an override. So. Um, you should digest this information in these budgets and, and ask as many questions you can to understand because the budget is the number one most important item that drives the success of this town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Of course. Okay, uh, at this point, uh, motion has been made and, and seconded. Uh, any uh, discussion as far as the article? Please state your name and address, please. My name is uh, Mark Wiggler, and I'm currently on the school committee. I'm also the chair of the budget subcommittee, and we've been meeting on this, uh, this Quabbin budget since um, since January, we started off with a 2.8% increase, and through several meetings, I want people to fully realize that the assessment that we asked for after the July meeting was a 1.9% increase in the overall Quabbin budget, which is very reasonable in basically a struggle to keep all programs intact. What I would like to do is make an amendment to bring the number up by $14,293 to the original assessment that was issued to the town of Quabbin of $4,751,988. I realize that that's a 6.31% assessment increase over last year for this particular town. There are several different reasons for that, which 
we didn't get into uh, in the discussion that, that Ryan had, but the fact of the matter is we need to come back to the 4,751,988 number, and that's increasing it by $14,000, which is on your paper. So the amount in your amendment is 14000 even? The amount, the, the amount in my amendment is to increase, I guess your number was 44000 something? The intent, the intent of the motion is to bring... That's the new number. So that would be... He wants to amend this number. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there a second to the amendment? There is a second to the amendment. So again, the amendment would be to strike four million seven hundred seven hundred thirty-seven thousand six ninety-five to four million seven fifty-one nine eight eight. Okay. So that is what is before the, the town meeting at this time. So your comments have to, have to be um, germane to the amendment. Anyone want to address the amendment? Yes, Mr. Gallant. Hi, Dan Galanti, Chair of the Select Board. Um, so we expected that there might be um, an, an amendment on the floor you know, to, to adjust the number that was recommended unanimously uh, by the Finance Committee and the Select Board. Um, you know, we, we um, in our evaluation of, of how sort of lean to make the budget, went as lean as we possibly could, as Ryan just stated. Uh, anything beyond that sort of got us into doomsday territory. Um, and so that's why we didn't uh, support any more than the already um, sort of um, ultra lean budget that was presented um, originally. So uh, I guess that would just be my comment. Any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, all in favor of the amendment, please raise your card. Thank you. Those opposed to the amendment, please raise your card. And the amendment fails. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. My name is Laura Foley from 12 Pitcherville Road. Earlier this summer, there was news that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was releasing more money to schools in Western and Central Massachusetts, but based on the conversation and the budget tonight, it appears that that has not had no effect on the Quabbin Regional School District. Could you please elaborate on that? Mr. McLean? Uh, I'm not an expert on it. We do have experts here. The, my understanding of uh, what happened was there was an increase for Quabbin for Chapter 70, but other, um, other assessments or, or monies that were expected for revenues actually decreased. So there was a decrease in state aid from the state for Quabbin rather than uh, increase, even though the Chapter 70, which is the most known number, went up. And if I said something wrong, um, and, and if I could just add to that real quick. So th there were things we heard, again, I'm not an expert on it, but there were th things in which I may not even use the correct terminology, but something like a rural factor that was going to be put into things for districts like ours, and I don't think it sort of made the final cut. Madam Superintendent. It is true that there um, has been some press around increased funding for education, uh, but the Quabbin Regional School District did not receive um, any additional funding other than to Chapter 74, which is the um, school transportation uh, line item. But we also had increases in our school choice and charter expenses that offset that increase. So um, we, we did not have an overall increase in funding. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor 
of the, the motion uh, by Mr. Glott. Please. Oh, line by line. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So the first one will. Okay. So the, the first one we'll be uh, doing is the, the Quabbin Regional School Assessment. And the amount is four million seven hundred thirty seven thousand six hundred ninety five. Okay. Right. So if there is a hold, please say that uh, quickly. Otherwise, we'll just be going through all of the other line items. Okay. So all set. Next is going to be uh, the DPW. Oh, start again with the first, right? Start here. HR consulting. Okay. All right. Here we go. So now, next line two, HR consulting, and that is four thousand dollars. I'm doing all anything. Call it. Got it. Okay. Next is going to be line three, select board expenses, seventy-five hundred dollars. Next is going to be line eleven, town clerk certification. Zero. Next will be line 17, Town Accountant Services, 42,000. Next will be line 20, Assessing Assistant, $30,502. Next will be line 27, Finance Assistant, zero. Next will be line 34, Town Custodian, $9,185. Next will be line 37, town website, $4,000. Next will be line 78, economic development coordinator, and that is $4,100. Next will be line 80, <clears throat> master plan expenses, zero. Next will be line 81, planning board assistant, $15,435. Next will be line 82, board of health and conservation com assistant, that's $13,721. Next will be line 83, $16,292. Next will be line 91, DPW assistant, $13,721. Next will be line 93, DPW road maintenance, $93,275. Next will be line 94, uh, General Highway, $32,288. Next will be line 106, Council on Aging Director, $15,281. Next will be line 113, and that is Library Director, $27,000. Next will be line 114, Library Assistant Wages, $16,075. Next will be line 130, 135, Chapter 32B, Health Insurance, $165,000. Next will be line 138, general insurance, $117,000. Total operating budget, $9,301,245. Correct? All set? Ready for a book? All in favor, please signify by raising your cards. Those opposed, thank you. Those opposed. Five, five opposed. Thank you, and the article passes. Next comes Article 2, 
Mr. Williams moves that the town vote to transfer the amount of $60,000 from the Municipal Capital Stabilization Fund to be expended under, under the direction of the Board of Selectmen to conduct a schematic design study of the Hubbardston Center School, 8 Elm Street, Hubbardston, for a potential roof replacement project for which feasibility study the town may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority. The MSBA's grant is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA. In any cost the town incurs in connection with the feasibility study in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the town. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Gallant. Uh, it is recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the, the Finance Committee. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the, the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by raising your card. Thank you. Those opposed, please signify by raising your card. And it passes unanimously. The article passes unanimously. Anything else? Um, the chair declares this special town meeting adjourned at, I'm sorry, yes ma'am. Did we actually vote on the school budget? I never heard that number read out, like what we were going to approve. We voted not to do the amendment, but did we vote on the actual? But, but then, then I read the, the total amount and no one called oh, the right. I Oh, not I didn't hear that. <laughs> okay, I did. Thank you. Okay. The uh, chair will now declare the special town meeting adjourned at 8.01.